going live on a Friday. Welcome in, guys. Today we're talking about self-sabotage and why right on the brink of success and growth, we sometimes talk ourselves out of it with sabotaging our thoughts. Why do we do this? I think there's a multitude of reasons why, you know, as we, as humans, we don't, we are so convinced on what we know we can do and what we can't do. And we don't want to even get to the outside of the comfort zone of knowing what we're comfortable with and knowing we can do this because if we go outside of that and try to do it and we fail we're like this is why yeah. this is why see i told you so yep, myself I, I told you this wouldn't work exactly <laughs> like there's so it's like the little mouse with the microphone in the ear like you should have listened you know you can't do this <laughs> well it's like the brain hates change and the brain loves efficiency <clears throat> so guess what's very efficient staying the same mm -hmm. and so Growth, change, massive success, sweeping changes just freaks the heck out of the brain because the amygdala is like, this could go wrong, that could go wrong. Defeating thoughts, limiting beliefs, all these things are brought to the forefront to protect us, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we could somehow magically erase all those fears, we could surge ahead without any issue. The problem is we have the self-narrative and the stories that we've bought into about ourselves, right? It, it comes from family, it's nature, it's nurture, it's both. And we believe the highest priority for the voice that we hear in life is the one inside our head. Well, I love like the guy we listen to. We talk about him a lot. We're waiting for his plug to come on his pod podcast. So yeah. Rob, if you're listening. Uh, we're but ready we to be interviewed anytime. <laughs> um, but we're huge fans of Rob Dial. And he uses the analogy of like, imagine if you have a little switch on your head and you can just switch off the fear and switch it back on and switch it off. And just imagine how much more you could do if you turned off all those fears, because really a lot of those fears are our own internal dialogue telling ourselves that like, oh, well, I'm not good enough to do this, or people are going to make fun of me if I do this, or what are people going to think, and why should we give a shit what people think? <laughs> like, we're doing this for us and for our families. We shouldn't care what people think. Like, But we do, mm -hmm. and it holds us back. And the, the real thing is, is that it's easier to know you can't do something so then you don't even try so you don't have to go through the embarrassment and all of the the i mean and the fear in our mind is blown up 10x for what it's going to feel like if we were to fail mm -hmm. fail at something because in reality people aren't thinking about us no. they're thinking about themselves yes right and, <laughs> but we feel like oh my gosh everybody's judging me i walk into the room at the party and everybody's looking at look at what he's wearing look at what he said he said that stupid thing and how could he do his hair like that and all that and nobody's even thought about me oh my god <laughs> all that is just right here i crazy? know we've probably all done this and a girlfriend of mine recently sent me this meme and it was like leaving a real estate networking happy hour event and it's like What's the girl from Bridesmaids? I can't think of her name anyways. The funny yeah. comedian girl. She's like driving in the car. And she's like, and I said this so stupidly. And oh my God, they're going to think I'm done. And she's like having this whole internal conversation with herself of everything that she said and what people were judging her on. And in reality, nobody remembers what you said. Like unless you yeah. say something extremely off-putting or extremely uncomfortable, nobody is going to care that you misspoke or mispronounced. I mean... I mispronounce my words all the time and I'm like, oh, sorry, it is what it is. Like nobody's yeah. sitting there back there being like, oh my God, she's so uneducated or anything like that. I like, mean, I had it know. one time, reality dropped right in my face and I was like, oh my gosh, I said this thing and I felt so weird and they're like, oh, you were there? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you were Never there. mind. <laughs> you were there? Uh, no, they do not even think about it. So it's like all these self-sabotage and turtle fears or like, I go to think of it too, like, have you ever talked to somebody about a goal or this was another example that was brought up in our podcast or they have this thing and they aren't quite sure that they can succeed at it because it's a little outside of their comfort zone. Well, you ask them about it and they're going to give you all the reasons of why it's not going to work. Like uh, most people know, like are very, very selling on why it's not going to work. Oh, like yeah. they've already ran it down in their mind. Well, it's not going to work because of this and there's not this and there's not this. and blah, blah, blah. So I don't even know if I should take these steps to get to this. Thing. It's like they're telling you every step they have to do, but they're disqualifying themselves so, from already, every yeah. step of the way. And you guys, it makes sense because we have stories about ourselves that come from our parents, come from our family, come from where we come from. So we have a relationship with money. We have a relationship with success. We have a relationship with how we interface with people. We have all these stories that we're bought into. And the, the composite of that in the brain is this is who I am, right? Mm -hmm. So when I deviate from who I am, even if it's success, like take money, for instance, you have like a thermostat, okay? And you start making more than the thermostat. 
you'll find ways to make less money to get back into your comfort zone、oh. unless you acclimate yourself. To the new version of yourself, which takes what it takes restructuring those narratives,、mm-hmm. changing those bullshit stories, and buying into the new reality that you're creating. But it's scary because it's like a defense mechanism. If I never love anyone or am friends with anyone or let people in, I can never be hurt.、Mm-hmm. But the consequence of that is I have a lonely existence alone. Right,、mm-hmm. so neither of those really works. So you have to find the middle ground where you can push through the self sabotage, which it turns out is a kind of defense mechanism from going out and achieving great things. Because it's easier for me to have the status quo where I don't have to exert myself. I don't have to drop these limiting beliefs and limiting dialogues and narratives I bought into in my brain in order to adopt and create. New ones.、Mm-hmm. It's easier to sit in the victimhood mindset and be the victim in the story instead of the author of the story. It's very, it's easier to、yeah. sit. Well, I love like some of the analogies that Rob talks about too. It's like he says, you know, he was speaking at a thing one、uh, year and he asked everybody in the room, like, who wants, to, who's going to make a million dollars this year? And like nobody raised their hands. And then he said, okay, well, who would make a million dollars if they were told at the end of the year their entire family, including themselves, was going to die? If they, Every, if they didn't do it, everybody rose their hands.、Yeah. They said, "What's the difference? Like, you should have that same kind of motivation to step outside of your comfort zone to be able to achieve those things." And he was like, "That that mindset shift of people just not when you ask the simple question of like who can do this, they're like, 'Oh, I could probably.'" And they're telling themselves all the reasons of why they wouldn't be able to do it. But if somebody said that about my family, I'd be like, "I got this. Like, let's go." Which、yeah. we all have high goals on this team, and we're all. Pretty like sufficient on what we want, but there comes that time of like, well, why wouldn't I be able to do that? You know, and you have to ask yourself those questions, and it's like, no, fuck that. Like,、yeah. we got this. Like, you can do whatever you put your mind to, and step outside of that comfort zone. It, absolutely, and it goes from why me and why am I the one to why not me, and I am the one. Yeah, I have to make this change.、Mm-hmm. So, like Ryan, if I, you know, we have people probably are watching, hopefully watching, and they're like, okay, this is great. Yeah, I know that I self sabotage, and we all have the internal dialogues with ourselves. What would be your like biggest tip on to helping somebody if it, to stop that, to kill that noise? Well, I think to short circuit the negative, the amygdala giving us and feeding us negative, false information is you have to interject some positivity, some training, and some tactical advice via、mm-hmm. book. Podcast trainings, masterminds, basically re-educate yourself to push you through that moment of like sabotage、mm-hmm. of like、oh, I can't go, I can't extend myself because I'm too exposed. I could、mm-hmm. fail. I can't walk that high on the high wire because I could fall. Right, and that, that, those are all true things. But when you start feeding your mind the reasons why you can, then you stop focusing on all the reasons why you can't. And then you push through and get on the other side of、mm-hmm. it and reach a higher threshold. And guess what? Spoiler alert: There's only higher thresholds beyond that, and that's what personal growth is all about. But I urge you to look back at a previous version of yourself that you now have exceeded, and at that time you thought that that you would be that way forever,、mm-hmm. and the things that held you back then were insurmountable walls that you never thought you could break through. But you have, and you're this person today that's different from the person back then.、Mm-hmm. So that the universe 